Hare Krishna, dear devotees, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books right here in Hive, Kent, Southeast England, just near the English Channel. We hope you are all well and safe and happy in all respects um, because we're hearing every day from Srila Prabhupada transcendental sound um, carrying uh, the absolute truth into our hearts and giving our hearts real satisfaction, uh, stability, uh, peace of mind and ecstatic uh, feelings towards Krishna and towards the great personalities of Krishna's eternal uh, associates. So we're so fortunate, we're so lucky. Let us count those blessings and keep putting uh, these transcendental deposits into, into our bank account, into our heart, so that someday it will uh, give us the price we have to pay for going back home, back to Godhead. Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavata Mihima Stotram from Srila Sanatana Goswami explains this in a very wonderful way by glorifying Srimad Bhagavatam, the summum bonum of truth. <clears throat> it goes like this Sarva Shastrabdipi Yusha, Sarva Vedaika Satpala, Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja, Sarva Lokaika Drik Prada. O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths. You are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana Srimad Bhagavata Prabho Kali Dvando Ditaditya Sri Krishna Parivartita O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya Prema Varshak Shadayate Sarvadasava Sevyaya Sri Krishnaya Namostume I bow down to you who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of Prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Madeka bando mat sangin, mad guru mad mahadana, man nistadaga mad bhagya, mad ananda namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu, sadhu tadayin, Atini chochata kada, Hanamun chagada chin mam, Prem narit kanta yokspuda. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya. <coughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya <coughs> So we've reached the 12th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto. And Maharaj Parikshit has made his appearance after being saved by Krishna. And the uh, great astrologers are now uh, predicting uh, the glories of Parikshit Maharaj. We start with text 20, chapter 12. Canto 1. 
the birth of mm, Prikshik Maharaj. This child will be a munificent donor of charity and protector of the surrendered, like the famous King Shibi of the Ushinara country. And he will expand the name and fame of his family, like Bharat, the son of Maharaj Dushanta. Purport. A king becomes famous by his acts of charity, performances of yagyas, protection of the sender, the surrendered, and so on. A Chatriya king is proud to give protection to the surrendered souls. This attitude of a king is called Ishwara Bhava, or factual power to give protection in a righteous cause. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord instructs living beings to surrender unto Him, and He promises all protection. The Lord is all-powerful and true to His word, and therefore He never fails to give protection to His different devotees. The king, being the representative of the Lord, must possess this attitude of giving protection to the surrendered souls at all risk. Maharaj Shibi, the king of Ushinara, was an intimate friend of Maharaj Yayati, who was able to reach the heavenly planets, planet where he was to be transferred after his death. And the description of this heavenly planet is given in the Mahabharata, Adi Parva, 96, 6 through 9. I'll, list, I'll read that last sentence to make it more clear. Mm. Maharaj Shibi, the king of Ushinara, Ushinara, was an intimate friend of Maharaj Yayati, who was able to reach the heavenly planets along with Maharaj Shibi. Maharaj Shibi was aware of the heavenly planet where he was to be transferred after his death. And the description of this heavenly planet is given in the Mahabharata, Adi Parva, 96, 6 through 9. Maharaj Shibi was so charitably disposed that he wanted to give over his acquired posi position in the heavenly kingdom to Yayati. But he did not accept it. Yayati went to the heavenly planet along with great rishis like Ashtaka and others. On inquiry from the rishis, Yayati gave an account of Shibi's pious acts when all of them were on the path to heaven. He has become a member of the assembly of Yamaraj, who has become his worshipable deity. As confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita, the worshipper of the demigod goes to the planets of the demigods, Yanti Deva Vrta Devan. So Maharaj Shibi has become an associate of the great Vaishnava authority Yamaraj on that particular planet. While he was on the on the earth, he became very famous as a protector of surrendered souls and a donor of charities. The King of Heaven once took the shape of a pigeon hunter bird, eagle, and Agni, the fire god, took the shape of a pigeon. The pigeon, while being chased by the eagle, took shelter on the lap of Maharaj Shibi, and the hunter eagle wanted the pigeon back from the king. The king wanted to give it some other meat to eat and requested the bird not to kill the pigeon. The hunter bird refused to accept the king's offer, but it was settled later on that the eagle would accept flesh from the body of the king of the pigeon's equal equivalent weight. The king began to cut flesh from his body to weigh in the balance equivalent to the weight of the pigeon. But the mystic pigeon always remained heavier. The king then put himself on the balance to equal the pigeon and the demigods were pleased with him. The king of heaven and the fire god 
disclosed their identity and the king was blessed by them. Divarshi Narada also glorified Maharaj Shibi for his great achievements, specifically in charity and protection. Maharaj Shibi sacrificed his own son for the satisfaction of a Brahmana. Shibi never allowed flesh-eating in his kingdom by any human being, and thus child Prikshit was to become a second Shibi in charity and protection. Doshanti Bharata There are many Bharatas in history of which Bharata, the son of Lord Rama, Bharat, the son of King Rishabha, and Bharat, the son of Maharaj Dushanta, are very famous. And all these Bharatas are historically known to the universe. This earth planet is known as Bharat or Bharat Barsha due to King Bharat, the son of Rishabha. But according to some, this land is known as Bharata due to the reign of the king of Dushanta. So far as we are convinced, this land's name, Bharata Varsha, was established from the reign of Bharata, the son of King Rishabha. Before him, the land was known as Ilavarta Varsh. But just after the coronation of Bharata, the son of Rishabha, this land became famous as Bharata Varsha. But despite all this, Bharat, the son of Maharaj Dushanta, was not less important. He is the son of the famous beauty, Shakuntala. Maharaj Dushanta fell in love with Shakuntala in the forest, and Bharata was conceived. After that, Maharaj Dushanta forgot his wife, Shakuntala, by the curse of Kanva, Muni, and the child Bharata was brought up in the forest by his mother. Even in his childhood, he was so powerful that he challenged the lions and elephants in the forest and would fight with them as little children play with cats and dogs. Because of the boys becoming so strong, more than the so-called modern Tarzan, <laughs> the rishis in the forest called him Sarvadaman, or one who was able to control everyone. A full description of Maharaj Bharat is given in the Mahabharat, Adi Parva. The Pandavas or the Kurus are sometimes addressed as Bharat due to being born in the dynasty of the famous Maharaj Bharat, the son of King Dushanta. Text 21 Amongst great bowmen, this child will become as good as the Arjunas. He will be as irresistible as fire and as unsurpassable as the ocean. <clears throat> Purport. In history, there are two Arjunas. One is Kartavirya Arjuna, the king of Haihaya, and the other is the grandfather of the child. Both the Arjunas are famous for their bowmanship and the child Prikshit is foretold to be equal to both of them, particularly in fighting. A short description of the Pandava Arjuna is given below. Pandava Arjuna, the great hero of the Bhagavad Gita. He is the Chetraja, son of Maharaj Pandu. Queen Kunti Devi could call for any one of the demigods, and she thus called Indra, and Arjuna was born of him by him. Arjuna is therefore a plenary part of the heavenly king Indra. He was born in the month of Palguna, February March, and therefore he is also called Palguna, Palguni. When he appeared as the son of Kunti, his future greatness was proclaimed by air messages and all the important personalities from different parts of the universe, such as the demigods, the Gandharvas, the Adityas from the sun globe, the Rudras, the Vasus, the Nagas, the different rishis, sages of importance, and the Apsaras, the society girls of heaven, 
all attended the ceremony. The Apsaras pleased everyone by their heavenly dances and songs. Vasudev, the father of Lord Krishna and the maternal uncle of Arjuna, sent his priest representative Kashapa to purify Arjuna by all the prescribed sangskaras or reformatory processes. His sangskara of being given a name was performed in the presence of the rishis who were residents of Shatashringa. He married four wives, Draupadi, Subhadra, Chitranga, Chitrangada and Ulupi, from whom he got four sons of the names Shutakirti, Abhimanyu, Bhagruvahana and Iravan, respectively. During his student life, he was entrusted to study under the great professor Dronacharya, along with other Pandavas and the Kurus. But he excelled everyone by his studious intensity, and Dronacharya was especially attracted by his disciplinary affection. Dronacharya accepted him as a first grade, first grade scholar and loved heartily to bestow upon him all the blessings of military science. He was so ardent a student that he used to practice bowmanship even at night. And for all these reasons, Professor Dronacharya was determined to make him the topmost bowman of the world. He passed very brilliantly the examination in piercing the target, and Dronacharya was very pleased. Royal families at Manipur and Tripura are descendants of Arjuna's son, Babruvahana. Arjuna saved Dronacharya from the attack of a crocodile, and the Acharya, being, being pleased with him, rewarded him with a weapon of the name Brahmashira. Maharaj Drupada was inimical toward Dronacharya, and thus when he attacked the Acharya, Arjuna got him arrested and brought him before Dronacharya. Arjuna besieged a city of the name Achichatra, Ahichatra, belonging to Maharaj Drupada, and after taking it over, he gave it to Dronacharya. The confidential treatment of the weapon Brahmashira was explained to Arjuna and Dronacharya had Arjuna promise that he would use the weapon if necessary when he, Dronacharya, personally became an enemy of Arjuna. By this the Acharya forecasted the future battle of Kur Kurukshetra in which Dronacharya was on the opposite side. Maharaj Drupada although defeated by Arjuna on behalf of his professor Dronacharya, decided to hand over his daughter, Draupadi, to his young combatant. But he was disappointed when he heard the false news of Arjuna's death and the fire of a lack house intri uh, intrigued by Duryodhana. Maharaj Draupada, therefore, Maharaj Draupada, Maharaj Drupada therefore arranged for Draupadi's personal selection of a groom who could pierce the eye of a fish hanging on the ceiling. This trick was especially made because only Arjuna could do it. And Maharaj Drupada was successful in his desire to hand over his equally worthy daughter to Arjuna. Arjuna and his brothers were at that time living incognito under agreement with Duryodhana and they attended the meeting of Draupadi's selection in the dress of Brahmanas. When all the assembled Kshatriya kings saw that a poor Brahmana had been garlanded by Draupadi as her lord, Sri Krishna disclosed his identity to Balaram. Arjuna met Ulupi at Haridwar, Haridwara or Haridwar and was attracted by that girl who belonged to Nagaloka and thus Iravan was born. Similarly, he met Chitrangada, a daughter of the king of Manipur and thus Babruvahana was born. 
Lord Sri Krishna made a plan to help Arjuna kidnap Subhadra, the sister of Sri Krishna, because Baladev was inclined to hand her over to Duryodhana. Yudhisthira also agreed with Sri Krishna, and thus Subhadra was taken by force by Arjuna and then married to him. Subhadra's son was Abhimanyu, the father of Parikshit Maharaj, the posthumous child. Arjuna satisfied the fire god by setting fire to the Kandava forest, and thus the fire god gave him a weapon. Indra was angry when the fire was set in the Kandava forest, and thus Indra, assisted by all other demigods, began fighting with Arjuna for his great challenge. They were defeated by Arjuna, Whoa! and Indradev returned to his heavenly kingdom. Arjuna also promised all protection to one Maya Sura, and the latter presented him with a valuable conch shell celebrated as Devadatta. Similarly, he received many other valuable weapons from Indradev when he was satisfied to see his chivalry. When Maharaj Yudhisthira was disappointed in defeating the king of Magadha, Jarasandha, it was Arjuna only who gave King Yudhisthira all kinds of assurances, and thus Arjuna, Bhima, and Lord Krishna started for Magadha to kill Jarasandha. When he went out to bring all other kings of the world under the subjection, sub, uh, subjugation, anyway, under the subjection of the Pandavas, as was usual after the coronation of every emperor. He conquered the country named Kalinda and brought under subjug subjugation King Bhagadatta. Then he traveled through countries like, like Antagiri, Ulukpur, and Modapur and brought under subjugation all the rulers. Sometimes he underwent severe types of penances and later on he was awarded by Indradev. Lord Shiva also wanted to try the strength of Arjuna and in the form of an aborigine, Lord Shiva met him. There was a great fight between the two and at last Lord Shiva was satisfied with him and disclosed his identity. Arjuna prayed to the Lord in all humbleness and the Lord, being pleased with him, presented him with the Pashupata weapon. He acquired many other important weapons from different demigods. He received the Dandastra from Yamaraj, the Pashashatra from Varuna, and the Antardad, Antardanastra from Kuvera, the treasurer of the heavenly kingdom. Indra wanted, to, Indra wanted him to come to the heavenly kingdom, the Indraloka planet beyond the moon planet. In that planet he was cordially received by the local residents and he was awarded reception in the heavenly parliament of Indradev. Then he met Indradev, who not only presented him with his Vajra weapon, but also taught him the advanced military and musical sciences used in the heavenly planet. In one sense, Indra is the real father of Arjuna, and therefore, indirectly, he wanted to entertain Arjuna with the famous society girl of heaven, Urvashi, the celebrated beauty. The society girls of heaven are lusty, and Urvashi was very eager to contact Arjuna, the strongest human being. She met him in his room and expressed her desires. But Arjuna sustained his unimpeachable character by closing his eyes before Urvashi, addressing her as mother of the Kuru dynasty and placing her in the category of his mothers, Kunti, Madri, and Shachidevi, wife of Indradev. Disappointed, Urvashi cursed Arjuna and left. <laughs> in the heavenly planet, he also met the great celebrated ascetic 
Lomasa and prayed to him for the protection of Maharaj Yudhishthir. When his inimical cousin Duryodhana was under the clutches of the Gandharvas, he wanted to save him and requested the Gandharvas to, re to release Duryodhana. But the Gandharvas refused, and thus he fought with them and got Duryodhana released. When all the Pandavas lived incognito, he presented himself in the court of King Virata as a eunuch and was employed as the music teacher of Uttara, the, his future daughter-in-law, and was known in the Virat court as Brihanala. Brihanala. As Brihanala, he fought on behalf of Uttara, the son of King Virata, and, was de de and thus defeated the Kurus in the fight incognito. His secret weapons were safely kept in the custody of a somi tree, and he ordered Uttara to get them back. His identity and his brother's identity were later on disclosed to Uttara. Dronacharya was informed of Arjuna's presence in the fight of the Kurus and the Viratas. Later on, the battle of Kurukshetra. Later on, later, on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, Arjuna killed many great generals like Karna and others. After the battle of Kurukshetra, he punished Ashwatthama, who had killed all the five sons of Draupadi. Then all the brothers went to Bhishmadev. It is due to Arjuna only that the great philosophical discourses of the Bhagavad Gita were again spoken by the Lord on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. His wonderful acts on the battlefield of Kurukshetra are vividly described in the Mahabharata. Arjuna was defeated, however, by his son Babruvahana at Manipur and fell unconscious when Ulupi saved him. After the disappearance of Lord Krishna, the message was brought by Arjuna to Maharaj Yudhishthir. Again, Arjuna visited Dwaraka and all the widowed wives of Lord Krishna lamented before him. He took them all into the presence of Vasudev and pacified all of them. Later on, when Vasudev passed away, Arjuna performed his funeral ceremony in the absence of Krishna. While Arjuna was taking all the wives of Krishna to Indrapastha, he was attacked on the way and he could not protect the ladies in his custody. At last, advised by Vyasadeva, all the brothers began their Mah Mahaprasthana. On the way, at the request of his brother, he gave up all his important weapons as useless and dropped them all in the water. Nice character study of Arjuna, Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Text 22. <clears throat> this child <clears throat> will be as strong as a lion <clears throat> and as worthy as shelter as the Himalaya mountains. He will be forbearing like the earth and as tolerant as parents. Purport. One is compared to the lion when one is very strong in chasing an enemy. One should be a lamb at home and a lion in the chase. The lion never fails in the chase of an animal. Similarly, the head of the state should never fail in chasing an enemy. The Himalaya mountains are famous for all riches, richness. There are innumerable caves to live in, numberless trees, of good fruits to eat, good springs to drink water from, and profuse drugs and minerals to cure diseases. Any man who is not materially prosperous can take shelter of these great mountains, and he will be provided with everything required. Both the materialist and the spiritualist can take advantage of the great shelter of the Himalayas. 
On the surface of the earth, there are so many disturbances caused by the inhabitants. In the modern age, the people have become in the modern age, the people have begun to detonate atomic weapons on the surface of the earth, and still the earth is forbearing to the inhabitants, like a mother who excuses a little child. Parents are always tolerant of children for all sorts of mischievous acts. An ideal king may be, may be possessed of all these good qualities, and the child Parikshit is foretold to have all these qualities in perfection. Text 23. <clears throat> this child will be like his grandfather Yudhisthir or Brahma in equanimity of mind. He will be munificent like the lord of, of the Kailas hill, Shiva, and, who, and he will be the resort of everyone, like the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayana, who is the shelter of even the goddess of fortune. Purport. Mental equanimity, like the grandfathers, mental equanimity like the grandfathers, refers to both Maharaj Yudhishthir and Brahma, the grandfather of all living entities. According to Sri Swami, the grandfather referred to is Brahma, but according to Vishwanath Chakravarti, the grandfather is Maharaj Yudhisthira himself. But in both cases, the comparison is equally good because both of them are recognized representatives of the Supreme Lord. And thus, both of them have to maintain mental equanimity, being engaged in welfare work for the living beings, for, for the living being. Any responsible executive agent at the top of administration has to tolerate different types of onslaughts from the very persons for whom he works. Brahmanji was criticized even by the gopis, the highest perfectional devotees of the Lord. The gopis were dissatisfied with the work of Brahmanji because Lord Brahma, as creator of this particular universe, in, uh, created eyelids which obstructed their seeing Lord Krishna. They could not tolerate a moment's blinking, blinking of the eyes, for it kept them from seeing their beloved Lord Krishna. So what to speak of others, who are naturally very critical of every action of a responsible man? Similarly, Maharaj Yudhishthira had to cross over many difficult situations created by his enemies, and he proved to be the most perfect maintainer of mental equanimity in all critical circumstances. Therefore, the example of both grandfathers for maintaining equanimity of mind is quite befitting. Lord Shiva is a demigod celebrated for awarding gifts to beggars. His name is therefore Ashutosh, or one who is pleased very easily. He is also called the Bhutanath, or the Lord of the common folk, who are mainly attached to him because of his munificent gifts, even without consideration of the after effects. Ravana was very attached to Lord Shiva, and, and by easily pleasing him, Ravana became so powerful that he wanted to challenge the authority of Lord Rama. Of course, Ravana was never helped by Lord Shiva when he fought with Rama, the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the Lord of Lord Shiva. To Vrikasura, Lord Shiva awarded a benediction which was not only awkward but also disturbing. Vrikasura became empowered by the grace of Lord Shiva to vanish anyone's head simply by touching it. Although this was awarded by Lord Shiva, the cunning fellow wanted to make an experiment 
of the power by touching the head of Lord Shiva. Thus the Lord had to take shelter of Vishnu to save himself from trouble. And the Lord Vishnu, by his illusory potency, asked Rikasura to make an experiment with his own head. The fellow did it and was finished himself. And so the world was saved from all sorts of trouble by such a cunning beggar of the demigods. The excellent point is that Lord Shiva never denies anyone any sort of gift. He is therefore the most generous, although sometimes some kind of, of a mistake is made. Rama means the goddess of fortune, and her shelter is Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu is the maintainer of all living beings. There are innumerable living beings, not only on the surface of this planet, but also on all other hundreds of thousands of planets. All of these living beings are provided with all necessities of life for the progressive march towards the end of self-realization. But on the path of sense gratification, they are put into difficulty by the agency of Maya, the illusory energy, and so travel the path of a false plan of economic development. Such economic development is never successful because it is illusory. These men are always after the mercy of the illusory goddess of fortune, but they do not know that the goddess of fortune can live only under the protection of Vishnu. Without Vishnu, the goddess of fortune is an illusion. We should therefore seek the protection of Vishnu instead of directly seeking the protection of the goddess of fortune. Only Vishnu and the devotees of Vishnu can give protection to all. And because Maharaj Prikshit was himself protected by Vishnu, it was quite possible for him to give complete protection to all who wanted to live under his rule. Hare Krishna. Believe it or not, it's 750. <laughs> it's amazing. So we'll stop here in our daily readings. There were so many details about so many wonderful personalities. I'll turn it over to the assembled sages for their reflections and uh, memories. And we'll start up tomorrow at text 24. We only did three verses. The, the purports were so incredible. All right. The sages have the floor. What's that? Camera light. Camera light. Did it work? Does it make a difference? I could turn it to other day. <laughs> Hi, Krishna. Okay, first up this evening is Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Gopakanya Devi Dasi will never forget yesterday's reflection. Hare Krishna, go ahead. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj, and all assembled sages. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Jai, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. And from Ma Rati Manjari? Yes, Rati. Jai Guru Maharaj, let's all go back home, back to Godhead. Together. Hare Krishna. And from Sudevi Dasi? Yes, Sudevi Dasi. Hare Bowl. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Glories to Sri. All glories to His Divine Grace, our Eternal Father, Srila Prabhupada. And from Shradanjali? Shradanjali, Hare Krishna. Happy Vasant Panchami. Happy Vasant Panchami. Oh, I'm in another world. I, f I forgot that it was Vasant Panchami. Thank you very much for reminding us. First day of spring. 
please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you. And from Vijay Krishna. Adibo Vijay Krishna. Related to expanding the good name and good fame of my Guru Maharaj and all the members of the disciplic succession, my question is, what is it that I need to do? Is it that the rigid, strict observance of the vows related to my initiation is a key factor in this regard? Yes, of course it's a key factor in this regard. If you don't follow the orders of your Guru Maharaj, then you become a namaparadi. Because the what's the second? Which which offense is it? Disobey the orders of the spiritual master. That's the third offense, I think. Third offense against the holy name of the Lord. So I would suggest, my dear Abhijaya Krishna, that you memorize these offenses against the holy name very thoroughly uh, so that you can apply them uh, to these kinds of questions you have. Yes, of course, following the four regulator principles and following and, and, and avoiding the, 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 the four sinful acts are, are essential. They're the basis of our spiritual strength. And you were given that, you, you took a vow to follow them uh, with your spiritual master. So if you don't do that, then you become a guru aparadi and therefore a nam aparadi. And you cannot make any advancement in spiritual life. But uh, on, above that, we need to learn to control our mind and senses. And we need to follow the orders of our spiritual master. And, you know, he is in line with uh, our founder, Acharya, Srila Prabhupada, who is the spiritual master of all of us, shiksha or diksha. And so his instructions are just as important to follow. In this way, we have a life full of vows and full of uh, austerity and full of high-minded principles. And if you live by those high-minded principles, then you become an exalted devotee. Just as we've heard the examples of all these high-minded and highly qualified Vaishnavas in this reading. And all of that happens by the mercy of your spiritual master and the Vaishnavas and the super soul. Hare Krishna. Gopi Chandra Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna Gopi Chandra. Hare Bo. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, to you too. And from Anandamurti Devi Das. Hare Krishna Anandamurti. Dear Guru Maharaj and all assembled devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to the Srimad Bhagavatam. Thank you so much for today's reading. Quote, because Maharaj Parikshit was himself protected by Vishnu, it was quite possible for him to give complete protection to all who wanted to live under his rule. Unquote. Therefore, the Lord Krishna is the cause of all causes. So it is important to hear from the authorized scriptures and follow their footsteps. Thank you so much. This is a very important point you made because... Uh, in order for a leader or a ruler or, or any uh, superior uh, to give shelter, then the person has to want that shelter. And in order to, want, to show that one wants that shelter, one has to act in a way that's pleasing to Krishna, pleasing to the spiritual master pleasing to the Vaishnavas, pleasing to everyone. And that's the secret to becoming highly qualified as a Vaishnava, as we learned in the qualities and characteristics and exploits of all the wonderful Vaishnavas in this last reading. 
to whom uh, Maharaj Pariksit is compared. So imagine he had all those qualities of all those exalted persons. Oh, such a great soul. And he gave it up. He gave up everything. He was young, he was strong, he had wonderful family, and, and he was the emperor of the world, and he was the shelter of everyone. But in order to become the receptacle of the Srimad Bhagavatam and bring it into the world, he gave it all up. Such an exalted soul, Hare Krishna. Vraja Loka Devi Dasi. Jai Vraja Loka. Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you for today's reading. Which was interesting to hear today was the topic of mental equanimity of Yudhishthir Maharaj. Mm. And that although he was such a great, learned, and pious devotee king, even he had to accept criticism from the very persons for whom he works. Yes. It helped me to understand how big renunciation it is to accept the role of a leader or take the responsibility of being manager and help me to appreciate my leaders and also help me to accept the difficulties in my service. Can you please say something about how can one achieve mental equanimity in these disturbed and contaminated times? Thank you so much. Yes, by seeing the difficulties as also the mercy of Krishna. The mercy of Krishna, we're conditioned by material nature to think that mercy means a pat on the head or a reward or something like that. But actually, the mercy of Krishna, it comes through the material energy also in the form of obstacles and difficulties. Because why, are, why do we accept them as mercy? Because they show us that it is not possible to be happy in this material world. There are always obstacles in this material world. Everyone. It doesn't matter who you are. From Lord Brahma down to the Indragopa germ. There are obstacles for everyone. And equanimity means to take shelter, especially at those times when one is in difficulty. If one learns the art of taking shelter of Krishna, taking shelter of the holy name, taking shelter of Krishna's pastimes, taking shelter of the deities of Krishna and the service of Krishna, then we will be able to be uh, equipoised under any circumstances. And the test of that is that our devotional service does not waver under, under, any, under any circumstances. Hare Krishna. Hare Bol Silvarao. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to His Divine Grace. Thank you Maharaj for reading every day the Granturaj Srimad Bhagavatam and the glorious purports of Srila Prabhupada. Your reading and our, our hearing cleanses our heart. Thank you. Hare Krishna, thank you very much. And from Bhakta Rupa. Hare Bo Bhakta Rupa. Jai, thank you for reading Maharaj. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Amazing to hear the exemplary character of the ideal kings. Maharaj Shibi offering his own flesh to save a pigeon. My first instinct would be to pass the pigeon over. I <laughs> also like the description of being as tolerant as one's parents. It frames tolerance as an act of love. If we see that those who require our tolerance as parts of Krishna, then our tolerating them would become less troublesome. Yes, thank you very much for that. And from Daitari Hari. 
Thank you, Hari 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 Bo. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for reading to us tonight. It was really nice hearing about Arjuna tonight. Mm. That must have been embarrassing for Duryodhana being rescued by Arjuna from the Gandharvas. Oh, yes. I also Not only that, but then later on, Duryodhana had to give back the weapons. Yeah, Duryodhana had to give back the weapons that were intended to kill, that he was keeping safe, because Bish, Bish made him vow that he would kill the Pandavas with those weapons. But Duryodhana had to give them back to Arjuna. Hare Krishna. I also found it interesting to hear that Maharaj Yayati is currently in the abode of Yamaraj. I wonder in that association, does he have a good opportunity to become a pure devotee himself? Was it Yayati or was it... Anyway, it was either Yayati or someone else. Does that mean what? Does that... I'm sorry, interrupting. I wonder in that association, does he have a good opportunity to become a pure devotee himself? Yes, of course. Yamaraj is in Mahajan. Right? Yamaraj is one of the twelve Mahajans. So by associating with the Mahajan, he can become a pure devotee, for sure. Sometimes I hear about these great personalities in the Bhagavatam who go to planets of demigods and assume them to be not so spiritually important. But I guess people go back to Godhead through different routes. I'm thankful myself that we have such a straightforward route back home through Lord Chaitanya's movement and the easy access to pure devotees. Yes, that is the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. He turned everything upside down. He, he doesn't, he doesn't uh, care you know, what a person's qualification is. If he's, if he's willing to take the holy name, he gives him uh, the perfection. If one's not willing to, if one's stubborn and will not take the mercy, then what can he do? But he's willing to give to anyone and everyone the holy name. No. no one has been that merciful, not even Krishna. Even Krishna de demanded surrender before he would give love of himself. But Lord Chaitanya gave love of God to everyone. All they have to do is take it, but that doesn't mean it, but still we have to take it. That's our duty. Hare Krishna. And from Vijay Krishna, Das. Jai Vijay Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Your answers to my questions are right to the point. I do promise that I will follow your indispensable instructions to the letter. <laughs> so happy that you are taking the trouble of helping me to make spiritual advancement. <laughs> okay. All glories to your pure devotional service. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. I'm just a peon, just trying to deliver the mail for Prabhupada, that's all. Hare Krishna. You notice I very rarely go off into other uh, topics that come from previous acharyas and everything, although they're all there in Prabhupada's purports. The essence of all the acharyas' teachings are in the Prabhupada's purports. But I particularly am very attached to Srila Prabhupada in his purports, and I'm just trying to you know, repeat them back uh, to answer the questions. Hare Krishna. As usual, wonderful reflections. Uh, I'm overwhelmed. It's getting sweeter and sweeter, as m many devotees are telling me, and I'm experiencing it myself. You know, it, it seems like 40, 45 minutes go in five minutes when we're reading these, this nectar. So please let's try to uh, relish more and more and embrace the examples and the philosophical truths that are filling these purports, the nectar, nectaring nuggets of gold, and let's mine them and try to follow in the footsteps. We can't imitate them. We can't become great by the, like these persons, but we can follow in the footsteps according to our capacities. Hare Krishna. 
This is the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. His mercy flows down to the most fallen. And if you remember the last verse that we read every day, glorifying the Bhagavatam, it also uh, delivers the most fallen. So we have no excuse. Excuses are taken away. And we just have to hear over and over again, submissively, uh, and try to understand, continue to try to understand. Uh, and gradually we will develop all these qualities that are discussed in the Bhagavatam according to our capacity. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Samabeda Bhakta Brinda ki jai. Go Premanandi Hari Hari Bo. See you tomorrow night. Same time, same place, same topic. The ever merciful, glorious pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna and all of his pure devotees. See you tomorrow. Hare Krishna.